your assessment of the game and as you say there at the state of the U, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um uh, ugly, bad. Um you know, Miami continues to not handle Miami's business. And as long as I've been, you know, talking with you for years, um, that's been my point. Miami needs to play to the level of their talent, and they refuse to do so. The coaches are unable to get them to do uh, such things, which is definitely not a, a good thing, not a, not a great sign. Um, and you, you lose to bad teams. And, I mean, obviously, by definition and default, that makes you a bad team. But you lose to FIU for the first time in program history. You followed it up with a loss to Duke uh, for to close this season, and now that makes consecutive losses to Duke for the first time in program history. Six and six against a pillowy soft schedule uh, with vastly superior talent to pretty much everybody other than Florida and Florida State, and you split those games. Um, that's why I picked ten and two. Um, but this team continues to underachieve. I I am fully supported by saying that Miami has done more, less with more, uh, less winning with more talent than anybody in the country over the last 15 years. Uh, this is a verifiable fact. And, uh, you know, that continued this week, uh, just atrocious. You know, I saw the stat at halftime, tweeted it out. Uh, Duke was eight and 63 in their previous 71 games when trailing at the half. And I tweeted that out after they said it on the broadcast. And a bunch of people hopped in my mentions and said, okay, well, mark that nine because you see what's coming. And I said, I mean, I can't really push back on that. I can't say, oh, no, Miami's going to – I mean, like, we've seen this movie. And that's why people uh, were so certain of what was going to be the forthcoming outcome. And that was what happened. Um, you know, Manny Diaz today on his radio show uh, or his radio appearance on a local radio show said, you know, well, you know, it all it would have taken was a touchdown in the third quarter and – that would have ended up being a blowout and da, 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 da. so then my logical follow-up is so what are you doing that's inhibiting that performance if you say okay the defense is locked down we're doing all the things that we need to do all we need is a touchdown why did that not happen when you had advantageous field position on a couple of drives in that third quarter what are you and your staff failing to do and obviously, I mean, you see what it is. You see that, you know, you're having predictable play calls. You're having these long developing play action passes with an offensive line that was just getting beaten like a drum. Gail, nine sacks aggregate between the two quarterbacks, which is the most since the 10 against Florida in the opener. Why are you running that? Why are you doing that? Why? How? Because you scored points in the first half. You figured something out. But if you say, okay, all we need is one more thing, one more drive, one more touchdown to blow this game open. While you're looking at that as a positive, I'm looking at that as a negative because you knew that that Duke team was hanging on the precipice of falling apart and you did nothing to actually incite that happening. This has been the story of this season. No matter, and I, look, I've been wrong about my 10 and 2 prediction since September with this team. Okay. So I know that my prediction was wrong. Even if you were like Mark and you said 8 and 4, which got me all riled up saying, no, there's no way. Even if you had 8 and 4, you've been wrong for weeks. This team has underachieved to a level that, I mean, relative to where the expectations were, relative to where the conversation was. Because remember, Manny Diaz was the one who said that Miami had the talent to challenge for a college football playoff spot this year. He said that anything short of a, co or a, um, a Coastal Division championship was a failure for this season. Manny Diaz's words. Manny Diaz at an event after he got fired, or hired, excuse me, said, you got two choices. You come to Miami and whip everybody's ass for three years, or you go somewhere else and you have us whip your ass. Manny, FIU beat you, buddy. For the first time in program history, the Miami Hurricanes lost to the FIU Golden Panthers from down on Cayo and 145th. All of that is to say it is not in a vacuum that I or other fans had these expectations. You look at the roster. You can name the names. Jeff Thomas, DJ Dallas. You get a quarterback with any kind of consequence. That's going to be great. You had a Brian Hightower. Okay, he leaves. You get D. Wiggins. He steps up. Mark Pope, KJ Osborne, Brevin Jordan, the best tight end in America. Will Mallory, who might be a better pro NFL tight end prospect than even Brevin Jordan, who should win the Mackey Award this year. You have uh, other running backs. Cam Harris, Lorenzo Lingard, uh, Robert Burns. You got dudes on defense. We didn't even mention 
mentioned Gregory Russo before the season, and he should be an All-American almost. You got John Garvin. You got defensive tackles. You got three senior linebackers. Four, if you want to include Zachary McLeod or Zach McLeod, who's a redshirt in this year. You got Trajan Bandy back, who had that uh, interception against Notre Dame in 2017. You got... All the talent in the world. Gervin Hall at safety, who Nick Saban flew to Palm Beach Lakes and landed the uh, helicopter on the football field to recruit him. And he said, no, I'm going to wear number 26 for the Miami Hurricanes. I got Bubba Bolden coming over from USC. I got Amari Carter. I got Robert Knoll stepping up to be a solid player. I got Al Blades Jr. I got DJ Ivy. I got talent everywhere on this team. And you talked all that shit, Manny. Loud, loud bravado. Beating your chest the whole time. And you go six and six. And then we're not supposed to feel angry or upset or let down. Misled, led astray as though this is a failure. Looking at something where this team is 130th out of 130 on third down conversions. 120th out of 130 in red zone scoring. And I could go on. So what are we doing? And I'm supposed to feel good about that? I'm supposed to just sit here and tell the party line? Oh, everything's great. It's like 2001 all over again. We're undefeated. We're scoring 800 million points and uh, shutting everybody out. And we're going to the national championship game. None of that's happening. This is the current state of affairs. And there have been many pieces of reaction on stateoftheu.com, which I tweeted out the majority of just now. And I urge you to go read. There are some people like me, and I put up the embattled coaches playlist. When a coach is on, well, first of all, I said Manny Diaz is on the hot seat because he absolutely is after this because he set that bar so high, for one. Then I gave the embattled coaches playbook and said, when you are on the hot seat, when your grasp on your job is tenuous as a uh, college football head coach, excuse me, these are the steps to follow to save your job. Al Golden decided not to do that. Mark Rick didn't have the temerity or the uh, um, energy to do what needed to be done. But the playbook is clear. So I wrote that down. You got some guys saying Manny needs more time. You say other guys say Manny Diaz needs to go. I don't necessarily agree with Manny Diaz needing to go. But things need to change. But through all of that, I'm unwavering as a, a Miami Hurricane. But the state of affairs currently for this season is dog shit. If you enjoy fantasy football, if you love Miami or actually just select your team amongst the FBS schools, you can play any of them at uh, play.miamimoneyball.com. So you go right there, play.miamimoneyball.com, select your favorite team, and you select uh, stat categories, and you select, and if you can project the stats, you win prizes, and the entry is absolutely free.